In this video, I'm going to cover five must-know text techniques in After Effects. And you can find the free project file for all of these in the description. So first up, we're going to talk about a simple position. Now, all I have here is a solid and a text layer. And I'm going to go to my text layer and click this drop down arrow here. And you'll notice we have this animate option. I'm going to click this button here and click position. Now we've added an animator and a range selector. So I want to twirl this range selector down. And I also want to twirl down my advanced tab as well. Now with a range selector, you'll see if we actually start changing this offset parameter, it'll move the red cursor, but nothing will happen. Now, all this is doing is as it's moving across the text, this is telling After Effects where the position of the range selector is and what it should be animating. So right now it would animate the P, O, S and I and the T, I, O, N wouldn't be animated. So what we're going to do is we actually need to add some animation to this. So I'm going to go down to this per position parameter at the bottom and in my Y axis, I'm going to change this to 100 and you'll notice our text now moves down. So what I'm going to do is keyframe this offset now. So I'm going to click on the stopwatch, I'm going to move forward one second, and then I'm going to change my offset to 100. Now, if I play this back, you'll notice our text now animates, and it's doing it per character, which is fine, but personally, I don't like that. So I'm going to go to the based on, and I'm going to change it to words, and now the whole word will animate up. Again, it's... Okay, it moves, but it's not fantastic. So I want to make this better. I actually want to change the shape of this range selector. So rather than where it says square, I'm going to click this drop down and I'm going to change it to ramp up. But now you'll notice it's only kind of doing half of what I'm wanting. So I actually need to change my offset and we need to set this back all the way to minus 100. So with the ramp up and ramp down parameters, you have to go from minus 100 to 100. I'm not sure why it's like this, but After Effects still hasn't changed it. Now, all we want to do is add some easing to this. Now, we can't actually select both these keyframes and press F9. Uh, it won't actually affect our easing. What we need to do is use these ease high and ease low parameters here in the range selector. Now the ease high is essentially our ease in. So I'm just gonna change this to 40. And our ease low is our ease out. So I'm gonna change this one to 80 as I want it to come to a smooth stop. Now if I press play, we get a nice eased text animation. Now you can play around with this, perhaps I'll speed it up a little bit to 20 frames instead. And if you wanted to, you could randomize this order as well, but we'll have to change this back to characters. And now we have a random positional movement, which is pretty cool. This time I want to create some cool glitch text. So what I'm going to do, select my layer and press S to bring up my scale. And I want to start a keyframe. And then I'm just going to move forward maybe four frames. So I'm going to hold control and move my right arrow key forward four frames. And then I'm just going to scale this up. And you can do this however you like. It's just personal preference. Now again, I'm going to move forward potentially two frames. And then I'm going to scale this back down to 50. Then I want to move forward some more frames. Again, holding control and using my right arrow key. And I want to size this up a little more. And then I want to move forward another few frames and size this back down to 100. Now, if we play this back, you'll notice it looks terrible and it's extremely fast. This is not what we want at all. So I'm going to select all of my keyframes. I'm going to right click them and click toggle hold keyframe. Now this will make every keyframe stationary, so nothing actually moves. So we have this glitch effect. Now that could be a bit quick and we could change that if we wanted to. Uh, so I'm just gonna delay that a little bit and maybe drag these keyframes out a little more. Now if you wanted to, you could also add some position into this as well. So I'm gonna press P on my keyboard and to see my scale keyframes at the same time, so I can kind of do them both uh, equally, I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and also press S and that'll show me my scale parameter as well. So I'm going to Click on my stopwatch and move forward to my next frame. And maybe on this one, I kind of want to offset the position a little bit. And then to go to my next frame, rather than manually clicking, I can click this arrow button here. that will send me to the next scale keyframe. Now you'll notice this is way out. And I'm just going to copy my first keyframe and paste it back using Control C and then Control V to paste. I'm going to move forward to the next keyframe. And I quite like that. So I'm just going to again right click these position keyframes and toggle hold keyframe and now it just mixes it up a little bit now to make this even better what we can do is on this first jump what i'm going to do is i'm going to 
split this layer. So I'm going to hold control, shift, and then press D. And this will split our layer at the current time, pound, current time point. So what I want to do on this top layer is I'm just going to rename it. And I'm going to change it to outlines stroke. Now in my text layer here, I'm going to turn off the fill. I want to add a stroke instead. And now we have two layers. One's a fill and one's a stroke. So then on my next keyframe, I'm going to split it again using Control, Shift, and D. But this time I'm going to delete that layer. I'm going to take my original layer, press Control and D, drag this back out, and this time cut it at the uh, start of the keyframe. So all our keyframes will still be the same, but I've just dragged where the layer starts by just clicking the end of it, and you'll notice these arrows come up. And then can drag that on. And then for the next one, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to control D on my stroke layer. And then again, I'm just going to drag this out and change my in point. And it's important we don't actually move the layer position on this. Because if we move the layer's position, it will move all our keyframes around. And that's not what we want. We just want to choose where the layer's start time is. And then for the last one, I'm going to return back to the original. So I'm just going to duplicate that again by pressing control and D. And then we're going to drag this out and drag the start out as well. And now, when I play this back, we'll have this cool glitched sort of type effect. Oh, I wouldn't really call it glitch. I quite like the outlines glitching around a little bit. And you can obviously take this a step further by adding extra effects to really sell the glitch. Now, this one is super common in a lot of infographic animations, and it's actually really simple to do. So again, I have my text and I'm going to drop down this arrow and I'm going to go to my animate button and again, add a position. Well, just like we did the first time, I'm going to set this value to 100 and then I'm going to open my animator range selector and my advanced tab. Again, on my offset, I'm going to set a keyframe and I'm going to immediately drop this to minus 100 because I know I'm going to use a ramp up. Then I'm going to move forward to one, one second and change this to 100. Again, on my shape, I'm going to change this to ramp up. And I actually want to leave it as characters this time, because I think it'll look quite cool. Now, just like we did before, I'm going to change my ease high, 40, and my ease low to 80, just to add some easing to this. If I press play, you'll notice we have this cool reveal effect. It's actually a little slow for me, so I'm just going to bring my keyframe back to maybe around 20 frames. I actually want to add more position to this, so I'm going to set this to 250 instead. And that'll just give us a more of a dramatic effect. Now, to make this reveal itself, we could, of course, animate the opacity as well by clicking this button here and opacity or adding a current one to our current animator rather than creating a new one. We can go to the add property and opacity. Now, I could just set this to zero and that will give us a reveal effect, which is nice, but we can do better. So I'm going to delete that by just backspacing on the opacity and we're going to use something called a mat. So I'm going to create a rectangle by clicking this button here and I'm just going to drag it over my text where it's visible, where I want my end position to be. I'm going to rename my layer by pressing enter on the layer and then just changing its name to mat. And now, obviously nothing's happening. We just have a square over our text. We kind of want the opposite of this, where the text is visible inside the square, but not anywhere else. And to do that, where it says track mat in your timeline window here, on the drop down, we can change the, on the text layer, on the drop down, we can change this to mat. And now the text will reveal itself inside of that layer. And anything it, that it goes out of, so anytime it goes out of this rectangle, it won't be in view. Now mine could be a little small here, so I might just drop it down a little bit. And now we have this cool reveal text instead, and it's a super simple setup. And of course, you can change this range selector to be words, or if you have multiple pieces of text, you could apply this to lines. Just make sure that your mat covers all of the text you're trying to reveal. Now we're going to create some stretch type, and this is super simple to do. All it requires is a few keyframes, but I think it gives a great effect. In my opinion, it's best to work with a monospaced or blocky font for this, as it will give a better effect. Now the first thing we need to do is actually convert our text to shape layers. So we can do that by right clicking our text layer and going to create and shape from text. You then twirl this layer down, you'll notice all our letters are now shape paths. Now I'm going to select all of these and in the little search window here, I'm just going to type in path and that'll bring up all our paths for this layer. 
And I'm just going to create a keyframe on all of these. Now to just show my active keyframes, I'm going to select my layer and then press U on my keyboard. This will just show me the only the path parameter. I don't need all the extra stuff. And I'm just going to drag this on to maybe around one second. Now, as that's my final form, I'm essentially going to work backwards. So right here, I'm going to start stretching my text at the start. And all we need to do is select our paths and we can pull these letters apart. But what you're going to notice, especially on the O and the C, is if we do it as is, you'll notice we get this weird text looking effect, which really isn't what we want. Now to fix this, it's super simple. I'm going to select my layer and I'm going to go up to my pen tool. And we need to add an extra anchor point and vertices into our O and our C. So essentially it has two to stretch from. So I'm just going to add to the inner and the outer of the O path. And then I'm going to do the same on the C as well. And we're just going to add another anchor point in there as well. Now the difference is, if I now select these and only select the one on the right, which that should be, if I drag these out, you'll now notice the shape kind of retains a bit more of its form. And that's exactly what we're after. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch my letters out now. So I'll start with the C and then I'll just work backwards. And you can stretch these however you like. It's all personal preference. Just have fun with it and play around. Now when you are doing this, do make sure your timeline cursor isn't over those original keyframes we created. As we don't want to affect how our rest position is at the end. And maybe I'll just pull the L a little bit and really extend on that and then i'll just pull the b over as well so i have something that looks okay but we need to make it look nice in animation so what i'm actually going to do is i want this to be centered so i'm going to select all of my paths and just drag these over so it becomes a bit more central it's important that we don't move the position of the actual shape player but move the path positions instead because at the end if we begin to move our position this will be offset too. So we want to avoid that and simply move our paths. So now we have this cool kind of stretch effect, which looks quite nice, but we can make it way better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these first keyframes over to maybe about 15 frames. And then I'm going to move forward two keyframes by holding control and pressing my right arrow twice. I'm going to copy all of those by pressing control C and then pasting with control and V. I'm going to go back to the start of my timeline and I'm going to select my end keyframes and again control C and then control V because I want to paste them. Now, I might just drag these end ones out a little bit to give it a bit more breathing room. Now you'll notice we get this kind of stretchy effect which looks quite cool and all we need to do is select all of these keyframes and press F9 to ease these. Now you can go into your value graph here to make it look really nice and speed up that easing but you kind of get the effect we're going for. It's fun to play around with and it creates a nice looking type. Now, finally, I want to talk about this text reveal effect and it's super simple to set up. Now, there's two ways you can actually do this and one of them I wouldn't recommend. I'm going to show you why. So you may have seen people do this using a stroke effect, uh, but this doesn't give you as much freedom as the method I'm about to show you because you'll notice here, you kind of get these overlaps where you might not want overlaps like my begins to reveal itself and really without trying to change all the path and mess around with the brush size which is going to affect all of it it kind of doesn't help and you're kind of making the situation worse so my way i would recommend goes like this so we want to draw over our text using the pen tool so i'm going to go up and select my pen tool and making sure i'm on stroke method rather than fill i'm just going to draw over this text as though I was actually writing it in real life. So I'm going to leave the uh, the dot of the I and the cross on the T until last. And I'm just going to go around and write it as I would. Now, if you have this issue and you want to create something new, I just recommend you re-click your shape layer and then you can start a whole new kind of shape path within that layer. And it'll just keep everything together. I'm just going to go over all of this and I'll be back in a second. Now you'll notice this isn't perfect and it doesn't need to be, but I'm just going to increase my stroke layer by selecting my layer and then increasing the stroke width. And then we can just play around with the points as much as we need to. I'm just going to go down to my drop down and just select the shape, go down to the path so I can reselect all of my points again. And I'm just going to manipulate these so that all of the text is covered. And when you have something you're happy with, uh, what we want to do is I'm just going to change this layer by selecting it, pressing enter and renaming it to matte. 
And then at the top here, all in the properties, you'll notice we have this add. So I'm going to click the arrow and add a trim paths. I'm going to go to the drop down arrows. And in about three seconds, I'm going to create a keyframe on our end property. I'm going to go back to frame zero and change it to zero. And you'll notice we kind of get what we're after, but it's all happening together. I'm going to change this trim multiple shapes to individually. And now it will write on one by one, but it's backwards. So what I need to do is just rearrange this path order. So I'm going to select shape one and just drag it to the top. And then shape two and shape three. And now we have it writing on in the correct order. Now what we need to do is map this just as we did before. So I'm going to select my script layer. On the drop down for the track map, I'm just going to select our matte layer. And now we have this write on effect. And you'll notice we're getting the same problems as what the stroke generates. But let me teach you how to fix it. And that's why this is the better method in my opinion. So what we're going to need to do is mask out these areas that are kind of showing through that we don't want visible at that moment in time. So I'm going to just go forward till my T starts to draw on, which is about here. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to select my pen tool, then select my matte layer. And on my pen tool, I'm going to change to this mode here, where it's tool creates mask. I just want to draw over the areas we want to get rid of that are on show that shouldn't be on show. I'm going to press M on this matte layer to bring up my masks. And I'm going to change the mask mode to subtract. And now you'll notice we get rid of it. So I'm going to do the same on the other side as well and just draw around what we don't want to see. And again, change it to subtract. Now, if I select this layer and press M twice really fast, it will bring up more mask properties for us. And I want to keyframe this mask expansion. So I'm going to select them on the stopwatch to create keyframe and move forward one frame by holding control and pressing my right arrow. And then on the mask expansion, I'm just going to bring this down a stupid amount. And now if I play this back on the T, it kind of looks way more natural because we're masking that out until it's drawing across. Now this might actually want to be a little sooner. So I could bring that maybe a frame forward so it looks more natural. And you can kind of do this to the timing and play with this as much as you like until it begins to look right. And you'll probably have to do this for a lot of your text if you have a lot of these kind of joined areas or you can try reducing your stroke width on your actual matte layer to the best you can without kind of destroying the original text. But this is kind of the best method I've found uh, that's the most accurate. And while it is a bit more time consuming, the end result is worth it. Once you're happy with all the masks on your paths, you can press U on your keyboard to bring up all your keyframes. And then on my ends, I'm just going to select them both and press F9 to ease them. Now you have a nice fluid text right on. And we might just need to adjust some of the timing on our expansion there due to our easing. So I'm just going to bring these two back. And that's much better. Now to make this even better, what we can do is duplicate both of these layers by selecting them both, holding control and pressing D. So we do control D. I'm going to bring both of these to the top. And I'm going to change my script two layer to mat two. And what I'm going to do is change my script layer on the top. I'm going to leave that as green, and on my bottom, I'm going to change that to white. Now, I'm on my top two layers, I'm just going to bring these forward five frames. And now when I play this, we'll have a slightly colored offset on our right on. And it just adds an extra level to our animation. Now, if you want to add some more depth and really transform these text effects, you can watch this video here.